Hi Linus, running late on that video? Here, take these heavenly organs from EK Water Cooling Heaven. Quantum X. So this is actually our first collaborative project uh, where we're doing something for uh, Linus Tech Tips. So uh, pretty much straight in with the biggest name we can try and pull off a collaboration with. Not that there's too much pressure there. Uh, we got a really short brief and now we're working out what we can do. Uh, the brief was that they wanted a reservoir to fit in a desk for dual loops. So uh, two separate loops, one for the CPU, one for the GPU, and a single reservoir that would in effect uh, help them uh, maintain full radiator capacity for both loops, but also keeping the advantages of having dual loops, so easy maintenance of one side on its own. Uh, the other little extra thing they threw in there was uh, a low profile RTX 4090 block that's going to fit flat in the desk. So everything's horizontal, it's really slim in the middle and the motherboard and GPU need to sit alongside each other. That's about everything we know right now. First step is I need to open up the 3D models that they sent to us, have a look at the desk, see what space we have to play with and then send back to them a proposal at least for the layout so they can figure out how things fit, are gonna fit, how big the stuff that we're gonna make is, uh, where we need to mount it, where it screws together, so that they can start machining, yes, machining uh, the entire desk at the same time as we start machining and finishing all of our parts for the, for the loop, so uh, pretty tight. Uh, I still don't know exactly how we're going to uh, figure out if these loops are both separated and combined simultaneously. I uh, hope we'll develop a plan for that. Uh, we're pretty pushed with the deadline that we need to turn this around in under a month uh, from today to actually sending the parts out so that the Linux team have time to put the build together. Uh, so yeah, uh, it doesn't really matter how many hours it takes, we need to fit it in. Obviously, the motherboard is a bit important, especially since it's a desk, because where we bring the tubes in is gonna block access potentially to cables. Uh, it would be really messy with it being so flat if they had to run over each other. Uh, so that's one challenge really that they need to decide on the board. Uh, we suggested to them using EVGA is uh, Z790 classified because the rotated socket would give us, you know, direct access to the uh, to the CPU block. We could make really clean tubing runs like straight over the 24 pin, which is like laid out flat. So we're hoping that they manage to get hold of a classified in time for the show. The chance of uh, Everything coming together perfectly with no need for any tiny adapters, uh, you know, like bends in tubes and all the stuff we'd like to eliminate to make that build super, super clean. Uh, honestly depends on if they get all the hardware, if everything turns out exactly as expected. I know from our side, we can make it just right, but from their side, you know, if, if one thing doesn't show or if one cable is not as expected or something, then uh, maybe we'll have to see compromises. I'm kind of worried that if we just put one massive copper slab in the middle of the reservoir, then one is gonna heat the other uh, when it's an advantage. So when one is cooler than the other and you actually want to warm up the other component, Funny kind of dynamic going on here, but you know, you might want that the GPU, uh, let's say rendering something, wants to steal some cooling capacity from the CPU, uh, but then if you were gaming rather than rendering, uh, you wouldn't want to let the CPU frequency drop in that scenario. So it needs to somehow solve when, and not just always uh, stealing the capacity from the opposite side. So. That is one thing to resolve either mechanically, physically, electronically, don't know yet. A little bit confused about it too. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we don't have very long to get this done. It's really tight. Uh, based on how fast the last Quantum X project's going, uh, I'm really worried that we're not going to cram it all in. And who knows, maybe we won't go to sleep for the next three weeks. Okay, let's get to work. Let's get this cat open and figure out what's going to happen. Quantum X. Three weeks later. Okay, so now the first part of the CAD is complete and we've created a layout for the entire desk. Until now, we just have placeholders for the custom parts for us and all of the standard parts like radiators and fittings and uh, blocks, they're all planned out. And there is a placeholder for uh, a dual pump reservoir, kind of a, a custom. Uh, dual FLT with two D5s that's going to mount directly to a radiator. Uh, there's going to be a pair of them that are symmetrical to each other. So one's on the left side of the desk, one's on the right side of the desk, and then they will join up with a huge uh, distro plate and heat exchanger in the middle. So we figured out how this interaction between the dual loops uh, could work. And that was actually with a third loop. So uh, each half will have its own heat exchanger inside the reservoir and a third loop will activate to circulate coolant between the two. Uh, and that way we have a control of when it's advantageous for uh, both loops cooling potential to be uh, utilized together. The pump runs and uh, you know, the heat is balanced between the two reservoirs. But when it's an advantage that they're isolated from each other, when one component should run cool and boost as high as it possibly can, then uh, they can be separated, the pump stops running, and uh, things remain uh, independent from each other. So uh, in that way, we are able to achieve all the advantages of a single loop in having the full capacity of radiators and all the advantages of a dual loop in them being truly independent when it helps. Uh, the next steps, uh, the final placeholders and all of the component positions has been sent back to the Linus team and they will be incorporating some changes into the desk structure, uh, mostly just the mounting points for all of the rads and we also put some mounting points for the big heat exchanger inside uh, and also suggested a small shift uh, in the GPU position just to make things a little more symmetrical. Then on our side, we need to start modeling the actual internals for the pump reservoirs and the internals for the big, huge, fancy heat exchanger. Uh, exactly how that's going to go yet, I don't know. So the big challenge is how we construct the uh, either internal tubes or internal plates. I think uh, probably tubes is going to be a more visual option and let us have like uh, a more extreme size for the heat exchanger. We can make it really long, so uh, we need to work out some kind of internal fittings that we can package uh, a copper coil inside each reservoir, uh, and then we'll be off the machining. Quantum X.
Quantum X. Okay, so with quite a bit of help from Martin, I made it through to the end, got everything put together. We're about two weeks behind our original schedule, but luckily the uh, Linus team are also running a little behind with their machinist. Everything should match up in the end. Uh, we, we also had along the way um, a lot of work done on our side into the distro and then figured a few things in the build weren't gonna quite work out, just placement of cable holes uh, and stuff in the desk. Uh, we sent recommendations uh, over to those guys and they pulled it in. So what we have now is gonna fit perfectly for sure. Uh, putting it together actually went really smoothly. I think the, the hardest part was uh, getting it machined, getting it in EK on time ready for us to build it. Uh, there was a lot of O-rings to make, but um, they're all really, really long. Not like it was lots of small pieces. So uh, the, the distros are not too many roots inside. There's like four roots inside the back distros and then the front side frames are sealed on both sides against the lid. So while we're here, we'll look a little bit how it works while we can look inside. So there are essentially in each of these two loops uh, on what will become the left side of the desk, which is for the graphics card loop. There will be three radiators way off on the left bank. Uh, they will run all connected up to these uh, dual D5 FLTs. And then just two tubes will come in uh, to the heat exchanger. The tubes which come in, one of them splits off in eight directions and runs in parallel across the copper tubes. Uh, these are gold plated copper tubes. So eight routes run across there and then into the GPU on this side. The other side's exactly the same story, except these run into the CPU. So when the third loop, which runs in between all of the tubes uh, and is powered by the two DDCs on the very side, uh, when that's running, that will normalize the temperature between the two loops and allow uh, effectively dual loops to act as a single loop, where all the combined radiator area, all six 240 radiators on both sides of the desk can all work together to cool down all of the hardware. Or if these two pumps don't run, the coolant doesn't pass between the two reservoirs and the tubes are effectively isolated from each other. So in that circumstance, then the GPU and the CPU can be entirely independent if one's running really hot. For example, CPU is running really hot, but you don't want to put that heat into the graphics card and cool down the well, heat up uh, the GPU with the, with the heat from the CPU loop, then you won't affect the boost frequencies of the graphics card and the two stay independent or vice versa. So uh, these secondary loops can either run together or not together. Mechanically interesting things, how things are gonna join up in the middle. So there's gonna be uh, one direct link on the front side between the left and right heat exchanger and there's actually one on the inside at the back. Uh, that will be really fun to assemble. The guys definitely have to watch out when they're handling these. They're both kind of three, four kilos on their own. When they're linked together, not to be twisting them, stressing them and, and damaging that joint in the middle. Uh, otherwise, it should be really straightforward to put the build together. Uh, there are four ports here in the middle. Uh, two will go back to the GPU, two will go back to the CPU and two on the extremes and that's it, everything connected. So I hope we've made something completely exceptional for that build, something that, that no one's seen before. It's, it's really novel in how it can work. Is it needed? No, Def definitely not. Uh, that this will be something that everyone sees in our loop. However, uh, it will be fun to try it out to see what difference it makes in reality if it performs as well as the single loop could and is as easy to work on and as easy to use as dual loops because still you'll be able to take off just the GPU. So kind of friendly for maintenance if you want to take the CPU out, for example. You don't drain everything, but just one third of the big loop. And uh, yeah, it looks absolutely formidable. We're really happy with all the gold plating and all the fittings that went inside it. Uh, I think this was one of the most effective ways we could have made the heat exchanger. So these are uh, 15 millimeter 
copper tubes and I connected with torque micros and custom uh, fittings that push inside the tube. So they're sealed on the inside, not the outside, like a compression fitting. Uh, the reason for that was just to pack them closer together, uh, save some space. I think it's been a really effective way to build it that looked perfect on the first try. So uh, really happy, can't wait to see these uh, in the final build and we'll be sending them off to Canada tomorrow. So come back and hopefully we'll be able to check out their video together. Uh, I'll give my reactions and hopefully I don't have to suffer through watching them drop it. Uh, <laughs>